For more than half a century, the Kennel Control Council has run Victoria's pedigree dog world. 17 men make up the executive, and that's the problem, according to women members who claim the council is sexist, undemocratic, and dictatorial. Anna Gregory reports. Here, speak. Speak. Good girl. Aren't you lucky kids? Ooh, young ones. For Jane Harvey, her Airedales are her children. Good kids. Oh, look, mummy got heroes. She's been breeding and showing pedigrees all her life, but now she's considering quitting because of a dog fight in the dog industry. I will fight until we get democracy. Either I have a voice or I get out of dogs, and I can't live with the dog world like it is. I could describe that system right now as sycophantic. Lynn Watson feels the same way. I want to see women have the right to stand or be nominated uh, for the committee. I am just completely and utterly frustrated. Their battle is against the male-only executive of the Kennel Control Council, the all-powerful ruling body of the pedigree dog world. In order to compete in any sort of dog sports, breeding, showing or even to own a pedigree dog it is mandatory that you be a member of the Kennel Control Council. What privileges do you receive as a member of the KCC? You give away your rights. You completely give away all your rights that you have outside of it. Where's the pussies? Go on, pussies! While almost three quarters of the Kennel Control Council members are women, in its 55 year history, no woman has been appointed to the executive. All this kerfuffle that's going on, I think, is what Shakespeare might say, much ado about nothing. Earn Drinkwater is one of the old male guard. He's been on the committee for 26 years. Women have been nominated, women have been considered, and they just have not quite made it. Why is that, do you think? Well, I suppose it's because we've been there for 55 years and it's pretty hard to shift 17 men after 55 years of having it on their own. The boys get away with it because there are no elections. They simply appoint their male mates. At the stage we find that the men have got possibly better attributes to be on that committee than the women have. They make a very, very valuable contribution towards the, what you might call the hospitality that is associated with dog shows and the provision of refreshments and food and all that. We're well aware of all that. But this is a business we're running. I've had to battle for everything and in order to retain my dignity, and not crawl and bend to their system. Jane decided to fight back. She took the committee to the Equal Opportunity Board, but it seems her sex was still an issue. I was asked all sorts of embarrassing and personal questions. They asked me my age, and then they asked me if it was because I'm at that time of life that I was bringing this, this action. They even asked me if I was menopausal. The Kennel Control Council has been accused of being a dictatorship, sexist and undemocratic. I will take the criticism, but I don't think it, it uh, supports the facts of the matter. There's always a small group of people who wish, for some reason of their own, to see if they can change the system. And a change in system is good, if it's for the betterment of the dog world. Now, whether it would be for the betterment of the dog world or not is debatable. Just recently, the KCC decided to hold a referendum, an opportunity for members to vote for or against democratic elections. But many members claimed to be intimidated because they were asked to include their names and addresses on the voting slips. Now, maybe we did make a mistake in doing that. But as far as we were concerned, all we were out to get was a general consensus viewpoint of how the membership felt. Are members frightened? Oh, absolutely. We still have people who say, no, no, please, don't speak to me in public, I'll, I'll ring you. I don't want them to know that I'm speaking to you. It's hard to believe that all this bickering revolves around man's best friend. The theme of a recent Labour conference for women was half by 2000 with the hope that by the turn of the century positions of power will be evenly shared by men and women in politics, business and elsewhere. But it's a lot easier said than done, judging by the way some men react now. But it's pretty much um, unfair for, for men in power to try and prevent women 
taking public action um, by using denigrating, sexist, very vicious sorts of remarks. We need to keep on putting women into public office. We need to keep on encouraging women to take action at all levels. He actually said to me, how old are you, Mrs Harvey? And I answered 52. And he said, both of my wives went really funny when they were 52. You are menopausal, aren't you? And what was your response? Well, I was flabbergasted. Jane Harvey is incensed by this attack she claims was directed at her by this man, Mr Bill Crowley, chairman of the Kennel Control Council. It's very serious. The Kennel Control Council could, at a whim, prevent anyone from showing dogs or from judging dogs and they use again sexist denigrating remarks to try and get Mrs Harvey to stop her uh, fight for democratising that organisation. Speak! 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 For 55 years it's been an all-male committee yet 75 per cent of its members are women. Will you continue to fight them? I am extremely determined to win. I have been involved in dogs since 1948. I know nothing but dogs, and I'm prepared to risk all that in order to get my democratic rights within that organisation as an individual. Anna Gregory reporting, and uh, we've just heard that a meeting held to discuss the issue has broken up with some good news for the women. For the first time in 55 years, women are free to take their place alongside the men on the Kennel Control Council. We'll be back in a moment.